I ask others in this given drawing to develop a transition piece that is formed from a square base to a round top. What is important is the sizes that's given, the 65 by 65 millimeter square base and the 35 millimeter diameter of the circle. This is important. The 35 millimeter diameter is important because later on we're going to have to work out what the circumference of this circle would be. Let's have a look how to go about developing this transition piece. Because we are working with a circle, we have to divide the circle into 12 equal parts. So that is step one, dividing the circle into 12. We then draw seams or folding lines. These lines that we've drawn here, the A, the B, the C, the D lines right around is lines that you're going to fold. If it was sheet metal or paper, you would have fold the metal or the paper on those lines slightly to form a piece that would go from a flat side to a round side. So step two then would be to join these 12 marks that you've made with your circle with each corner. Like I've labeled here A, B, C, D, and I've also labeled that as E because that's the seam or the joint, um, the joint that they want to join up at the end of the day. In step three, you can see I have now determined the true lengths of side A, side B, side C, and side D, meaning this side or, or fold A, fold B, fold C, fold D. E is parallel to my XY line, therefore E, this length from B to A, from B to A, that length is a true length. And if you measure that, that is 67 millimeters. You can see I've labeled my true lengths here, but you might ask, why have I only drawn two true, true lengths? Take note, that the length of CA or line A or fold A is the same size as line or fold D. The same happens with B. B that I've got here is the same length, if you follow that circle, and when you do the construction, you'll see that, is the same length as C. Therefore, A and D has the same length. A and D is 74, and B and C has the same true length B and C has the same true length as 71. The next step that I did here is to work out the circumference of the circle, which we spoke about earlier. That total distance was 110 of the circumference. And because we have to divide our circle into 12, we have to do this construction of dividing this 110 into 12 different pieces or equal pieces. And if you zoom into that you can see that one size would be 9.17 millimeters and if you then set your compass to that each time it's going to be nine millimeters now the reason for this drawing is you must remember we are working with true lengths so we were working with the true length of a b c d as well as that e there but we also need the true lengths of this spot here from that point to that point from that point to that point from that point to that point each one of these which are equal and therefore, we need to have the true lengths in its totality. So we did this drawing to find out what is the true length of each one of these divisions. So in short, the first that we did was to divide our circle. Then we joined those marks of our circle with our corners. Then we worked out the true lengths of each one of them, as you can see there, as well as remember that seam that they want us to start with. Then we worked out the true length of each one of these segments here by determining the total circumference and dividing it into 12. We are now going to do the development. First part of development, E, A, is the two lengths that we worked out, true lengths. E, we worked out the true length as 67. A, we worked out the true length as 74. We know what the length of B, C would be because it's on the base, so it's 32 and a half. So from point A to point B, we measure the E length, which is 67. From point B then to point C, I make myself an arc. We know how to do that in previous drawings that we did, um, where we had rectangular to rectangular or straight-sided figures to straight-sided figures and not circles. It works in the same manner. So from point B to point C, from point B to point C is 32 and a half. I make myself an arc. The length of that A, we've worked out the length of A. The length of A was 74. Put my compass on A, make myself an arc to get point C. 
So the next triangle, we did this little one. So we're going to do this one. So we've got AC, we've got A to C, we've already got. I now need to find line B. So the true length of B, we've worked it out here as 71. Put my compass on point C, draw myself an arc. The length from point A to that point there, we've worked it out here as 9. I set my compass at 9, draw myself an arc to get that point. Next step, I want this little triangle, which is this one here. The one that we've got on B. We've drawn B, so I need to find C. So we've got the length of C. C is a 71 millimeters. That distance there we've got as 9 millimeters. So we measure 9 millimeters and we measure 71 millimeters for our arcs and we draw that. There's just one thing that I need to remind you. It won't be straight lines. It's going to be a curve at the end of the day. I'm just drawing it as straight lines for now so you understand, understand the triangulation part. You can now see that I've built this line D or this triangle from C to D. I've done that part there. Now I've drawn D, which we know is 74. Set my compass on that point C, from point C to point D. Made myself a 74 arc. I've made my compass, put my compass there, opened it at 9, made myself a mark, and I've drawn that little triangle with D. We now get to this bigger triangle, triangular part, this one. From that center point to point C to point D, back to that center point there. We've already got line D. We've got line D. We know the length of the base is 65. We know the length of the base is 65. So I make myself an arc of 65, putting my compass on C. And I need then to find the length of this line, which would be the same as this one, seeing that the circle is right in the middle. All these lines that we have here, those lines we have here and those lines we have there will have the same length as A, B, C, and D. So that line has got the same length as D, which is 74. So I put my compass on that point that I've got there, 74 millimeter arc, that gives me D and that gives me this base. Now the whole process gets done over again. We've already got this side here, which is side A. We now need to get side B or length B or fold B. So I'm going to measure the distance of that semicircle as we've done with all these. Measure the distance of the semicircle. Measure the length of B. Put my compass on D. Measure B. The same now gets done with line C. I'm now going to determine line C. I measure the length of line C. I've already done it here. We've already done the constructions here, 71. So I will measure the distance of line C from point D, measure that distance of 71, measure this, in, uh, this semicircle part, measure it there, and join the lines to get line C. And we will carry on the same way with line D again, and then find the triangle. Now I'm done with all four of these lines, all four of those lines. So what needs to be done now is to find that bigger triangle once again, as we've done with this one. So I'm just going to measure the distance of ED, which is 65. Put my compass on D, measure a distance of 65. I have got the length of this line D or line A. It's the same for that line there. We do all the constructions all over again. So once again, I put my compass on that point. We are busy with triangle D, E, and this point here on the circle. So from that point, I measure this distance, which I've got as the length of line A, which is 74. And I measure 74. So I've got 65 and 74, which gives me point E. And I go about the same way as I've done with this triangle. Now, once again, the same as we've done here, we carry on with the same there. We must remember we've got four sets of four lines, four lines, four lines, four lines. There's four sets. We've done two of them, uh, one, yeah, two of them, one set here, and we've done another set there. So set three has to be done here of A, B, C, D, and the triangle and A, B, C, D, and then half a triangle to complete. You will note that I've now wiped out all these lines. If you can remember earlier on in the previous explanation, I said these lines, I'm just drawing it as straight lines for now, but it should be circular because remember, this is a circular shape. 
So these lines has to fit around that circular shape. So we're going to draw lines from one point to the other free and in a circular form. This will complete then the development of this transition piece. Remember we started with ABC, that was half of this full side here. So we will end off with that half, which would be FBA. So we're going to end off with FBA, which is only half a triangle, meaning that that distance there will then only be 32 and a half.